In footnotes, you can also use text variables. Text variables pull information from or about your document and then repeat it in an automated way. Examples include the chapter number, creation date, file name, image name, last page number, modification date, output date, and running header information. This information can be modified to include additional text and formatting choices by defining the text variable settings. Text variable settings can be created and modified via the type menu. So you would use the type menu, come down to text variables, and then choose insert variable or define variable, depending on what you're trying to do. Note, you should only modify text variable settings once you feel comfortable using the basic text variables, which we'll talk about in the next slide. So practice with the basic uh, variables first, and then when you, when you feel confident that you understand how it's processing the information, then you can start to define your own text variables. So let's talk about the basic steps necessary to insert a text variable in InDesign, and these are gonna be our basic text variables. First, we're going to identify where the text variable should be inserted and place the text cursor accordingly. With the text cursor blinking, choose the type menu, text variables, and insert variable, and then choose a text variable option. And they are chapter number, creation date, file name, image name, last page number, modification date, output date, or running header. In this example, I've inserted the file name and I've colored it pink so you can see it. However, after I inserted the file name, I realized I hadn't saved my document. So I went ahead and I saved it as var text variables .indd. Then, because I inserted the information as an automated text variable, you can see the text automatically updated to reflect the next file name. You may need to save and reopen the document to see the change. So if you just change it, if you just do file save, um, if you just edit the file name like on the desktop of your computer, you may need to close out and reopen it. But because I automated it, it will always change depending on whatever the file name of the document that I'm working on is. You can also use the text variables to do some easy automation of quotes and descriptions of images and things like that. You can see here that if you use the type menu, text variables, insert variable, and then image name, that you can insert the name of the image that you are placing in your file. The text box used to insert an image name text variable must touch the image frame in some way. So notice, oops, notice here on the left hand side, I followed the path. I used type, text variables, insert variable, image name. And I also followed the instructions on this slide. So I have a text box and my text cursor was blinking at the time. But notice how when the text box is not touching the picture, it just says no intersecting link. That means that there's no photo that's touching this for it to be able to insert the file name. But once I drag the text box over the image, you can see that it changes to be the name of the image. Now you could do a better job naming your images so it doesn't have um, like a run on sentence for the name of the picture. You can use spaces and then it would look better. Um, but very quickly, that's a very quick way to make sure that all of your pictures have captions. So in this example here, I have used uh, a text variable to make sure that every picture in my project includes the name of the picture. And then I made sure that I made sure that the file name matched the picture in a way that would be okay to use in a project. Notice the difference between building in Brussels and Eiffel Tower uh, with spaces between the words, how nice it looks compared to the run-on of Botanical Gardens in Paris and Jan van Eyck's statue in Bruges. In addition to text variables, you can insert special characters. I think this is the option that you'll probably use more often at this point in your education, uh, but feel free to experiment with both. So although special characters aren't technically text variables, some of them can be thought of in the same way. Special characters insert an automated variable that can change depending on the placement, location, and intention of the special character. Examples of special characters include, so there's different categories when you hit that flyout menu. There are symbols, markers, hyphens, and dashes, quotation marks, and other. Uh, we won't go, I won't read every single one, but I'll pull out a few. Like if you wanted to insert a copyright symbol or a trademark symbol, you can do that. 
via type, insert special characters and symbols. Markers are where you'll get your automated page numbers. So you'll choose type, insert special character markers. Usually you'll use the current page number option, but you can also um, use it to insert footnote number. So if you wanted to reference a footnote multiple times in your project, you could link it that way. You can change your hyphens and your dashes. So to insert a hyphen, you can, or a dash, you can use the key on your keyboard. You can also use key commands. So um, I think it is command dash will give you a longer dash, which is an M dash. A shorter dash is an N dash. Um, if you want to, you can uh, use it as a special character if you can't remember your key commands.